Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to cover the condition macro as part of Harlow 3.3. So the condition macro, C-O-N-D, allows us to create multiple conditions and their outcomes as part of controlling how passages display things and change things. Let me get into some examples about how this works. So in this first example here, we're going to use the condition macro to create a series of things. Now the condition macro is trying to solve a problem that sometimes we can get ourselves into. If we want to create a range of things or we're going to create complex code where we're using multiple if macros or else if macros or if and else macros, so if, else if, else if, if you feel like you're getting yourself in a situation where you're writing these multiple times, there might be a case where the condition macro might be a better usage. So let me show you right here a pretty common situation where you want to respond to a range of things. So we have the if macro right here, if counter is less than two or less than equal to two, then else if counter is less than equal to four, then if counter is less than equal to four, then if counter is less than or equal to six. So kind of progressing thresholds, two, then four, then six, and then maybe many, many others. So we can write code like this, but we can actually make it a little easier to read for humans by using the condition macro, C-O-N-D. In this case, we create an odd number of things, and then what we want to do. So the condition and the outcome, the condition and the outcome, as long as it's an odd number, and the odd number will be what is the default. So if none of these things are true, what should happen as a result? So the thing I wrote up here using if, else if, else if, I can also write the same thing right here. So counter less than equal to two in the range of counter is less than equal to four, counter is less than equal to six, and then right here outside the range. So if none of these are true, and if none of these are true, this is the default. So let me go ahead and build and play the story to show you. So build and play. Right here, if I increase the counter, notice it's in the range of zero, one, and two. Now it's three and four. Now it's five and six, and now it's outside of range. So I can solve this using if, else if, else if. Now let's go ahead and reset. Now coming down here, I can solve it the same way. Now we're in the range of zero, one, and two. Now we're in the range of three and four. Now we're in the range of five and six, and now we're outside of the range. So they are similar structures, but it is provided to make things a little more human readable. So as we saw right here, this was multiple lines of code, three right here, and this is, well, maybe one to two, depending on how we do it. But potentially, we create many, many more conditions that would be a lot simpler than potentially just the if, else if, else if structures. So the condition macro is kind of a shorthand to help us with common situations where we can pair up things. Condition, outcome, condition, outcome. Now the other thing I want to point out here is notice this is responding with text within the associated hook. So the if else if situation right here is text using condition. I'm setting the condition right or setting the output right here, this temporary variable to the result of this entire thing. So structured slightly differently. This is producing text right here, and this is saving a value to a variable using a set macro, and then I'm showing that outcome right here. So potentially, again, if you wanted to kind of condense this right here, you could do the same thing right here. Now, both are perfectly valid, depending on how you want to structure your code. Again, it's provided as a shorthand to help you if you think you might need it to make things a little human readable or make things more human readable. So let me jump to a different example. Often, we find ourselves in situations where we want to provide feedback to readers or players they've changed some statistic or some value beyond some bound. You want to kind of tell them, hey, this is too high, this is too low, this is outside a particular range. Condition macro is a really useful way to approach that as well. So right here, I have a counter temporary variable set to zero, link rerun, so we're going to continue to rerun things. So each rerun, I'm increasing counter by one, and then I'm setting output, the same thing I used in the previous passage right here, using condition macro, where it says, if condition is greater than four, show counter is too high, otherwise, right here, have an empty string. So remember, condition is used with an odd number of things, in this case, three. 
So condition output default. The default's not going to do anything. It's going to replace right here the output with an empty string or not really show anything to a user. But if there's ever a case where counter is greater than four, if you keep clicking on it, it's going to say counter too high. And this is a really great example of making things a little more complex packed and potentially a little more human readable in situations where you only really care, is this above a certain threshold? And if it's not, then go ahead and don't show them anything. So to go ahead and run example two, story start, build and play, increase, now we're, sound, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, but as like, ah, counter's too high. So again, if we wanted to give a kind of simple feedback in a particular threshold, too low, too high, if you're adjusting statistics accordingly, this would be a really great way to do that. It would also make things, again, a little more human readable than potentially structures like this, where you've got if, else if, else if, else if, you've got lots and lots of different things. You can also, by the way, use multiple conditions. So if we wanted to check one thing on one line and a set of things on another, we could also approach it in the same way. So the condition macro has some limited usage, not necessarily usage for every particular use case where we might use if, else, and else, if, but useful to create something that's a little more human readable and especially cases where you're gonna pair a condition with a short thing, condition value, condition value. For those particular cases, condition macro, C-O-N-D, is very, very useful. Thanks for watching.